everybody! Hello, hello! In this video, we're going to give you three tips on how to slow dance together. Ooh, so it could be at your wedding, it could be at somebody else's wedding, or it could be anywhere that there might be some slow romantic music and you guys just want to have a moment together. In this channel, we teach people how to dance with ease and confidence. Yes, we're not trying to teach people specifically how to do the specific dance or the specific steps, but we're learning how to have specific skills so that we have a fun time together. These tips are based on our 15 years of experience teaching couples how to dance. Exactly, we've been having fun teaching them throughout the years, and these tips are universal for everybody. And speaking of everybody, everybody please, like and subscribe and hit that notification bell down below if you find the tips in this video helpful. So let's get started. Tip number one is have the proper dance hold so that you guys not only feel comfortable dancing together, but you also look a lot better too. Usually people will just dance like this. It was what we call the grade eight shuffle. Or sometimes a zombie dance. <laughs> <laughs> I am possessed and I cannot do anything else. <laughs> High school dancing. <laughs> exactly. But let's <laughs> level up our dancing just a little bit more and have a proper traditional dance hold. All right. So leads, we are going to place our left hand about shoulder height. And we're going to keep our hands open with our fingers together like so. And follows, we're going to place our fingers on top and then everybody's going to close all their fingers and thumbs. Awesome. Easy enough. From here, and I'm just going to turn ourselves around. So leads, you're going to place your hand on your follows back. It could be somewhere up by her shoulder blade or scapula, uh, closer to her spine if you like, but not too much lower down over here, if you need to get my drift. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and follows, lastly, we're gonna put our left hand just on the shoulder, somewhere comfortable, not too high, not too low that you get this chicken wing. Yeah, somewhere nice and comfortable where you still have connection. Exactly. Now, as you want to be more formal with your dance hold, we can, of course, pick up the elbows and give each other a little bit more space. But if you want to be a little bit more intimate and get, we'll say, a little bit more casual, we can get ourselves a lot closer together. And if you notice our elbows, whether it's now leads our right elbow or I'll just turn myself around, even my left elbow, the hands and the arms come a little bit closer together or towards the center of the couple. Yeah, and that gives us definitely a more intimate feel. Exactly. One other thing, well, of course, we're going to be enjoying each other's company, probably having a conversation as we're dancing. We're looking at each other. Yeah. But we don't want to, because of positioning and we're so close, we don't want to feel like we twist away from each other because that's kind of awkward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're just kind of having our shoulders, our hips facing our partner, and then we can start dancing together more confidently. Definitely. And as we're dancing, you'll notice that our hands are in the middle of the two of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So as we're dancing, we don't want to be offset into some, someone's space mm -hmm. or the other. <laughs> right in the middle where we call, we kind of say that there's an imaginary border line. Exactly. Yeah? And that's where that hand's going to sit. Yeah. It keeps everything nice and balanced and more comfortable for both of us. Yeah. One other thing, as you're seeing us start to sway and kind of go side to side, you'll notice that our hands are actually quite quiet. So we're not trying to now dance the hands. <laughs> we're actually just dancing the bodies. Okay. And the hands just happen to be connected to our bodies. Exactly. Tip number two, turn that home base pattern. So whatever pattern you choose, make sure that you're turning to keep it interesting. So with our goal being more natural and less zombie-like with our dance, <laughs> yeah, we can actually now take our time and turn the whole couple as we're dancing our home base action. Ooh, now I'm getting a different view of the room. Exactly, and so am I. <laughs> <laughs> Not just the same wall the whole time. <laughs> exactly, that gets a little bit boring and a little bit stuck, really, if I keep on dancing just like this with Clara. Mm. <laughs> Come on, Joel, change it up. Exactly. <laughs> now, if we talk a little bit about changing it up, there's a few different ideas that we want you guys to understand. So idea number one is that we're not trying to spin or really have these turns be so rambunctious that people are seeing or we're feeling like we're really turning. It would kind of look like this. <laughs> like I'm on a merry-go-round. <laughs> a really fast one. <laughs> exactly. It's not about being dizzy or about how fast we can turn. It's about just having some turn. Yeah? yeah, just have it like very light, very gradual, as if uh, you don't even know what's happening. Exactly. Yeah. So the best lead actually is the follow is just like, oh, 
we're turning now. <laughs> what a surprise. Look what a that. pleasant surprise. Exactly. Yeah. And the second thing that we want you guys to understand, especially for us leads, is that when we are wanting to initiate that turn, that we're not trying to steer our partner or our follow with our arms. We're just keeping the arms again in position, just like what we did in our tip number one. And we're turning our whole body. So if you notice, my whole body is turning and my arms are kind of staying on the spot. What I'm not trying to do is say, Clara, turn. <laughs> yeah, and because as follow, or what I like to call responder, um, because I'm responding to his action, I'm only going to turn if he turns. And if he doesn't turn, I won't turn. Exactly. But the key is, like we talked about in the dance hall, is that we need to remain parallel to each other at all times. So then, naturally, if Joel does a turn, because I want to stay parallel, I'll end up turning. Mm -hmm. And again, a very pleasant surprise when it's nice and gradual. Before we go into tip number three, we want to hear from you guys. Where do you think you would be using your slow dance skills apart from a wedding? Most of our couples are preparing for weddings, but a lot of them are finding that learning this new dance skill is useful in other situations. Exactly. So those other situations, we're curious where you think you would use your dance skills. Tip number three is about the music. We've gotten you more comfortable together and now we need to get you comfortable dancing with the music. So for some people, musicality comes naturally. They just have that rhythm and they get on the dance floor and it's very easy for them to synchronize with the music. But there are a lot of couples that come to us saying, I don't know anything about music. How do I dance with it? Exactly. It becomes actually the scariest part of learning how to dance. Mm -hmm. And so what we'd like to do is we like to simplify everything into the smallest part possible, which is now a two beat sentence when we think about music. So music has repeating patterns through the whole song, mm -hmm. um, normally in four beat patterns. But as Joel said, we're gonna simplify it and just think of it as a two beat pattern only. Exactly. And we named these two beats, boom and chick. <laughs> boom chick. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So with these two names, the boom represents the bass drum. Yeah, so for those of you who know, kind of have seen a drummer behind the drum set, mm -hmm. um, the bass drum is the one that uh, is down here and, and he's really using big. his foot pedal, he or she. Uh, I was a drummer, so that's I right. shouldn't be a but that's know, right. sexist. <laughs> <laughs> so he or she is using her foot to uh, hit that, that drum. Exactly, and the chick represents now when we hit the snare or the drum that's out over here. Yeah. yeah, yeah, which is kind of the more um, clearly heard uh, sound because it's more in that medium range. Yeah, exactly. So if we're listening now to this music, we have that boom, chick, boom, chick. Yeah, we hear now these two beats and they're just in a mini sentence and that's all we have to think about and try to now understand boom, chick, boom, chick. Yeah, now in terms of what we do with our feet, easy rule to think about is that you're going to be stepping on the booms. Yeah, generally we're going to step on the booms and transition for a chick. Yeah, and especially for slow music, this works out very nicely. So, should be easy to remember. Don't step on the chicks. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So if Claire and I just do our side basic, we'll just do it side by side. Sure. Just gonna, where is now that boom chick? Can you guys can you hear that? Boom. Chick, ready, here we go. So, boom, chick, boom, chick. So if you notice we're stepping on the boom, we step on the boom, we step on the boom. And we're doing a little bit of a tap, if you notice, on the chick. Which is optional, you don't have to. But sometimes when there's kind of like a very clear chick, then it kind of goes nicely. Exactly, yeah, we're not trying to step on the chick, we're just stepping on the boom. <laughs> Don't step on the chick. <laughs> yeah. So if we now do this together, it's going to look like this. Boom, chick. Boom, chick. Boom, chick. Boom, chick. Exactly. Now, this song is one of thousands and thousands of songs out there that you could be dancing to. And then might not necessarily have this sound. Some other songs might have, for instance, a guitar instead of drums. And so they would sometimes have a strum and they would slap the, the strings. So again, there's that two beat mini sentence. Yes. 
But a good tip is if you can't really hear the beat or you're having trouble finding it, just ignore the melody. Exactly. Don't listen to the lyrics nope. and just concentrate on that percussion. Exactly. Have fun with it. Be comfortable with it. Don't force it. And then you'll have a much more natural, authentic, intimate slow dance together. If you like these three tips, we've got more tips and tricks on our channel. So make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for when we post more videos like this one. And if you want to practice these tips that we just gave you with some easy songs, we have a free download in the description below that goes over a bunch of different songs that are easy to dance to. Thanks very much for watching. Have fun dancing. Bye guys.